Yoast SEO Tutorial XML Sitemaps That's what this video session will cover. Yeah. This is actually a great feature of Yoast. It allows you to generate XML sitemaps. XML sitemaps look like this. It has .xml file extension. And if we look at the source code, this is an XML sitemap. You declare the XML sitemap, so now search engines like Google can come, look at the URL, and look at the other URL details. They will find out the location of the URL, when it was last modified, does the URL contain an image? Yoast SEO sitemap actually do all this for you automatically. Now this is a great feature. Now what do you do with your XML sitemaps? From the front end it looks like this, but search engines look at this, not necessarily these. Okay? So what you can do if you want, when you enable Yoast XML sitemap functionality, Log in to Google Search Console under Crawl Menu option, find Sitemaps, Add and Test Sitemap. You can actually have this parent sitemap if you want. As in, this is the location of the parent sitemap. Because Yoast actually generates parent child relationships. This is the parent sitemap URL, or you can look at different sitemaps. Make sense? So you can submit these individually if you want or simply submit the parent sitemap and let Google search engine take care of the rest. Remember you need to test it before you actually press submit. Okay. Now let's go and take a look at more settings here. Once the sitemap is enabled, then, as you can see, this plugin creates a sitemap automatically for you. Here you can change maximum entries per sitemap. You can make that 500, or 1000, and so on. For most small business websites, you leave that default. If you end up changing these, then yours will simply break your URL counts by generating different sitemaps for, let's say, for the second uh, 1001 blog post or page that you have, then it's going to create a different sitemap URL, okay? Here, user sitemaps, you can disable this if you want, but I just want to show you what happens when we enable it. If we press on enable, users without posts, this is rather ideal if you're letting other people log in to your WordPress site. For 90% of WordPress setups, you will actually have this disabled. But you may have a membership site, you may give access to different people, you can give different roles such as editors, authors, contributors, um, <laughs> depending on what you're seeing there. Some themes will show you different things here. Okay? Now let's actually save changes because I want to show you what happens when we enable that author sitemap. As you can see, this is the author sitemap. So I'd like to have that disabled. Let's save changes. Let's go to our parent. Now the author sitemap is gone. Then we have post types. At minimum, you want to have posts pages and let's imagine you have photography related website only at that moment you may have attachments in sitemap and I but I still encourage you to disable them now I'm going to show you my clients settings as well so that you can see the difference Let's look at sitemaps, post sitemaps. Now, 
this particular valued client of mine is using custom post types and they do have a custom post type named as properties. So that should be in the sitemap. But in this scenario, at minimum, have the posts, pages, and if you have custom post types, then have that enabled in the sitemap. Excluded posts. This is rather tricky to say to yourself, okay, you know what, what is this about? How can you utilize this? Now, at basic level, if you have a small business website, then you will definitely know which pages are perhaps private, or perhaps does not have any value, such as thank you, message, and so on, then you can say, you know what, in this example, cookie policy, let me press on edit, that's a typical page, I can grab this URL, post number, and go and put a comma and then place that in there. Now, what will happen when I do that? Let me press on page sitemap. Okay, let's press on this affiliate area. Just testing this for one of my valued clients. Obviously, I forgot it. But, let's go and sort that out. Save changes. Let's refresh this page. And that ID is gone from the sitemap because it shouldn't be in there because there is nothing unique on this page. Make sense? Now, while here, excluded posts. Now, I'm working for my valued client and they do have specific landing pages that are within sitemaps. But the fact is they shouldn't be in the sitemaps. So, how do you work that out? You work that out by looking at your sitemaps, whether it's pages, whether it's custom post types, whether it's product categories for WooCommerce sites and so on, and ask yourself, the pages that you have, or the URLs and so on, do they have unique content? Because you rank for uniqueness in Google. And if they don't have unique content, or if they have duplicate content, such as perhaps you're running promotion, you have specific landing pages, they all look the same, but a certain message changes for each URL, such as the case for my valued client. But the fact is, once Google becomes aware of these URLs, then your rankings are effective. Make sense? So that's why you need to work out, you know what? Do I have duplicate pages? It's the same page, same content on different pages. It's in different URLs. Make sense? And if that's the case, then you may say, okay, you know what? Can I exclude some of them? And once you do that, then in the sitemaps, all those details will be gone. But the thing is, I'm going to show you another method to make sure this actually works. And then your rankings improve quickly especially if you have lots of different URLs to exclude. Because although you can use this, what this is going to do, it's just going to remove those URLs from the sitemaps. But if Google is aware of those URLs, then it's still calculating your rankings. So what can you do to remedy that? As in, get rid of duplicate content, and so on, right? What you can do, I'll actually show you. All right, so. No, I'm going to show you on my client site. So then I hit two birds with one stone. I share great insights with rank your fans, as well as keep working on my client site. You need to look at header.php file and let's say these are the IDs of the pages. You work that out by looking at the WordPress dashboard. 
then what you can do is for your example you need to modify header.php file locate the head section and just after the head section you can place the sample code that I will show you Where is it? Let's see how you can what you need to do is in your example let's cut all that out so basically you need to create a PHP statement that looks like this but instead of is tag you say if is page double type for all operator let me do this if is page with an ID this let me copy to speed up the process or this or this or this or this or this or this in this example let me now grab all the IDs and cut that out of there place that in there This will be the correct way of fixing that duplicate BISO. Especially in Google Search Console, HTML improvements, if it's showing you duplicate things for your WordPress site, then this is actually the most intelligent way for you to quickly remedy that. So basically, what this statement will say. If it's page with this ID, or if it's this page with this ID, blurt this code out, specifically targeting Googlebot, telling Googlebot no index. That means next time when Googlebot requests that page with that ID of your WordPress site, it will see this no index. And it's going to take that URL from its index, because if it's duplicate content, it shouldn't be in its index. So in my client's example, I have to say else if and remove this state. But in your case, I've just shown you a sample code that not many SEO experts will show you. Let me now put that file onto my client's site. Let me go and look at this URL to show you what happens. There is nothing unique here, as you can see. Let me look at the source code and let me find Googlebot. Here, oh, it's indexing. Let me refresh. That is no index now. Makes sense? So before it was indexed, now I fixed it up. And I also made sure those URLs are not within the sitemap. So now when Google requests the sitemap of my website, your website, it's going to look, it's going to not see the excluded post. But that's still irrelevant because if it's indexed already, then it's still ranking you for it, ranking your entire website and keywords and all. So the best way to then remedy that for your WordPress site is by using this conditional statement by saying, you know what, that is duplicate content there, do not index. For your future duplicate content issues, to avoid it, make sure you're using canonical URLs. So make sure you're seeing this relevant relationship canonical. So this link is the canonical. So if you have this in place, then don't be alarmed with duplicate content issues because Google search engine is highly advanced. It can work things out.
but your aim is not just to optimize your website, but precisely control what Google ranks your website for. That's why you exclude posts and also no index them if you are 100% certain there is nothing unique on certain URLs of your WordPress site. So let's continue looking at taxonomies. Here I have category in place, but for my example, I don't want post tags in sitemap. Let me hit in sitemap and save changes. Because then I can show you the difference there as well. So let me look at XML sitemap. Here, Yoast generated a sitemap for my tags. But for a typical WordPress site, this is actually not smart to have in the sitemap. That's why I don't want to have it in the sitemap. Now you may think, why? Let's explore why. This is a tag. That's a tag URL. And that's a tag URL as well. Take a look at this. That's a URL. That means if Google is aware of a URL, it's going to analyze what's on it. And there is nothing here that is unique. It's just a typical WordPress setup. Makes sense. On this page, there's nothing unique. This content is somewhere else on my website. Let me show you where that is. It is here, adding new users to WordPress. So it's coming from here. But I want to rank for this URL and whatever the keywords on this URL. I don't want to rank for this URL. And I want to make Google's job very easy as well by saying to Google, you know what, Google? I don't have a sitemap for you to go and analyze. My website does not contain anything useful here. Let's look at the source code. Let's go and find Google bot again. Here, I've said, you know what? When you come to URLs like this on my site, Google bot, do not index these because there's nothing unique here. I'll show you a tag that controls that. Here, I'm saying, you know what? Do not index tag pages WordPress. Now, word of caution. If you end up making changes such as the one I've just shown you, as in no index your tags, keep in mind the URLs Google has indexed on your website, the count will drop drastically. And there may actually be fluctuations in your rankings. But from experience, why have tag pages indexed by Google? Okay. So let's go back to our dashboard. Let's look at XML sitemaps of Yoast. So I've basically covered all these settings for you, as well as as well as shared code that you're not going to find elsewhere easily. Furthermore, I have actually tried my best to explain the best practices for optimizing your WordPress site using Yoast SEO plugin. There will be more videos, because I'm making series of them, for your WordPress site. I thank you very much for learning with me. If you benefited from this video session, please do share it and give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe because I am making great videos for you to see better results from Google and your WordPress site. And I'll talk with you in the next video session.